On Wednesday, we're pink again. Make dilations on the graph, section 3.5. That's what you guys will be able to do at the end of this, okay? So dilations, where have you guys heard of things being dilated? Your eyes. Yeah. Your eyes, okay? What's that mean when your eyes are dilating? Being okay, the pupils shrink or get bigger, right? To adjust to the amount of light coming in. Yeah. So if you ever like turn off the lights and then turn them back on, you're looking at someone's eyes, you notice the pupils get smaller or bigger, right? Okay, that's what dilating means. You're making things bigger and smaller, okay? Now, is it weird, like, do your, does, does your pupil grow bigger proportionally? Like, is it still in a circle at the beginning and the end, or does it come like an oval, like one side gets bigger than the other? It stays the same. It stays the same, right? So when we dilate things, it's proportional. All things kind of stay the same in reference to how it should be. If we start out with a circle, we're gonna end with a circle, okay? So dilation is the enlargement or reduction of a figure. Enlargement is making it bigger, reduction is making it smaller. Now we have this thing called the scale factor. Indicates, and it indicates how much the figure will enlarge or reduce. Factor means what operation? Division. Multiplying. If two things are factors, it means they're multiplying together. So the scale factor is something you multiply it by to make it bigger or smaller. If you're saying it's two times as big, times means multiply, right? So you're multiplying it by two. If it's half as big, you're multiplying it by one half, which would be the same as dividing by two. Now we have this thing called um, the variable for the scale factor, and that is k. Okay, the, um, the letter K will be our variable for a scale factor, okay? Have you guys ever heard things being to scale or something's not to scale? Yeah. Yeah. Where have you got, get, raise your hand if you want to give me an example of where you've heard that, okay, Dylan? Like when someone's like making a model or something. Okay, like maybe like a model car or a model of a building, okay? They'll say it's not to scale because it's not the actual size of the car or building, right? It's smaller. Now, but is everything proportionally the same? Like is, is the hood bigger than like maybe a window? Um, you know, kind of a thing like that, or, uh, um, you know, uh, or the outside of the building is proportional to each window on the building, okay, that kind of thing. Uh, Seth? Cereal boxes. Okay, cereal boxes, right? They'll say enlarge to show texture, okay, a lot of times. So you have this, like, you know, huge, huge crunch berry on the outside of Cap'n Crunch, okay? And the crunch berry is not actually that big, but it's scaled to look bigger, okay? So that kind of thing. So they are, they are being scaled up or down. These are not the same size. That's a K. What aren't? The graphs. Correct. Good observation, okay? So when K is greater than 1, when our variable, our scale factor is greater than 1, the dilation is an enlargement. Now let's think about it this way. If we multiply by something bigger than 1, is it going to make it bigger or smaller? If I take anything and I multiply it by something bigger than 1, so maybe 2 or 3 or 4, is it going to make it bigger or smaller? bigger. If I multiply by a number bigger than one, it's going to make it bigger. Two times something, three times, four times, five. It's going to make it bigger. There's going to be more. Okay? When K is less than one, it's going to be a reduction. It's going to make it smaller. So whether or not it's bigger or smaller than one will tell us whether it's a reduction or an enlargement, whether it's getting bigger or smaller. Okay? If we're making it half as big, we're multiplying by one half, and it's becoming smaller. Okay? Yep. Okay. Continuing on. Now, Kenny did note that these graphs are not the same size. These are not 8 by 8 graphs anymore, 16 by 16, okay? Each one goes 10. So that's 20 tall, 20, 20 wide. Um, and from the origin, you have negative 10, positive 10s um, all around, okay? Heads up on that. So originally, we're going to graph this triangle RST with the vertices R, S, and T. Go ahead and start that at first, okay? Okay, so it should look something like I have up on the board for R, S, and T being there. Now, what's it say our K is? Our scale factor is what? Two. two. So that means we're going to make everything how much bigger? Two times. two times as big. So here's what we're going to do. 
We're going to take this negative 5, comma, na comma 1 for the point for r. We're going to multiply every single number by 2. So what's negative 5 times 2? Negative 10. What's it 1 times 2? Two? Uh, two. 2. Now if we go and plot this point here, now let me do this in pink actually. Can they go into each other? Okay, they can overlap. Um, no. So let's look at this one. Negative 10, comma 2. Does that look twice as far to the left and twice as far up as R? Yes. Good, it should. Let's look at S prime. So you take S and you multiply them by 2. So negative 3 times 2. Negative 6. 4 times 2. 8. So if we go 6 to the left and 8 up, and we call this S prime, does that look twice as far to the left and twice as high up as S does? Yep. Good, it should. Now for T prime, can somebody tell me what T prime would be? Four, four negative two, very good. We multiply each of them by two. So we're gonna go four to the right, two down. Is that twice as far to the right and twice as far down as T is from the origin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we connect these triangles or these points to make this triangle, I should say. And it straight up consumes the other one because it's bigger than the other one. Questions on that? So we took the green triangle, we made it twice as big, and now we have this pink triangle. So is this just normal multiplication? Yeah, do we know how to multiply? Yeah, I think so, okay. Do we have questions on this first one? Okay, let's go ahead and try the second one, okay? Well, let's first graph the rectangle A, B, C, D. So I'll give you a second to do that now. Okay. Okay. So we have this rectangle A, B, C, D. And now what's our scale factor this time? Three. Three. So what are we going to do with all these numbers? Multiply them by three. Very good, Seth. So negative three comma zero becomes negative nine comma zero. B prime becomes three comma six. C prime becomes six comma zero. And D prime becomes negative six comma negative six. Do you know how to multiplication? Is that what we just said? Ah, I got you. Probably not. Okay, so you should have yours look something like mine. Does anyone have any questions on how I got mine? No. Okay, hold up before you raise. I, no, I just did it okay. wrong. Okay. So I multiplied each number by 3, and I got my answers. Questions on that? Hi, Hungry. I'm Mr. Castle. I don't. Oh, yeah, let me pull out a baked potato out of my desk. Okay. Gregory, you said wait. Mr. Castle, yeah, wait. Okay. Does anyone still need or have questions on two? Ooh. Be honest if you do. Pocket potatoes. Okay. You what? You what, Bailey? Okay. Thank you for your honesty. I just made it up. Wait. Kenny, you good or no? No, it's confusing. What's confusing? Why is it close on one side? To the origin. Okay, because we went three times away. So this, so C, was C very far away to begin with? No. So C is not going to be as far away as A, because A was farther away to start. Well, so in our scale model, everything is proportional to how far away it was. Okay. Does that make sense? No. So because C was only one, two away, and A was three away, well, C is going to end up six, and A is going to end up nine. They're going to end up different distances. So as you double it, it's going to be twice as far. As you triple, it's going to be you know, more and more and more as far away. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Continuing on. 
Number three, wait, wait, wait. What's our scale factor on number three? It's 0.5. Okay, it's one half, 0.5 if you will. That's a fraction. Is that less than one? Yeah. So is this going to make it bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller. Let's go ahead and graph this one first, though. That is true. <laughs> Few people realize that. So originally we get this rhombus. Okay. Anyone have any questions on this rhombus and how we get it? Why do you sound like a Western Okay. So now, what we do is we multiply each of these numbers by one half. So we're dealing with fractions, okay? So it might be a good idea to start doing some of this off to the side if we need, if we need help with it. Negative 10 times 1 over 2. Well, can we put this negative 10 over 1? And those can reduce, right? To negative 5 and, and 1. So we get negative 5. Now, maybe you can do that in your head, and if so, awesome, great. But if not, feel free to write it down, okay? And don't forget, multiplying by one-half is the same thing by, as dividing by two. I just heard like 10 times 0.5, and now it's divided into two. Okay, times by one-half is the same thing as multiplying by 0.5 because they're the same number. So one o 2 over 1 times 1 over 2, those 2s reduce. Nine. We get 1. Questions on how I got J prime. Now, it might be a good idea to continue writing these off to the side as you do your other points. Go ahead and finish this problem off, please, and thank you. That's the spirit. Okay, let's talk about this one up here. So k prime should be negative 1 comma 4, is that correct? Okay, can somebody tell me what l prime should be? Okay, Kenny? Okay, thank you. Can anyone tell me what m prime should be? Okay, Elizabeth? Negative 1 comma negative 2. Habits are tough to break. I don't know, it sounds expensive. So we end up getting this mini rhombus. That's half the size. Questions on that? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're feeling good about these. Thumbs down if you're not. Be honest with me. Thumbs up if you're feeling good. Thumbs down if you're not. Okay, let's continue on. We're going to go to number um, nine. Okay, on number nine here, we're given the pre-image and we're given the scale factor, but do we know the coordinates of the pre-image? So what might be helpful here? Writing them down. Writing them down. So let's write down where Q, R, S, and T are at. Q, R, S, T, and No. Q, R, S, T? Oh, uh, I don't think I did. Okay, I hope so. Okay, Q is where? Negative 1, comma what? Negative 1, comma 4. Okay, R is where? 1, comma 2. And now notice this graph is the same as our original graphs were, so be careful on these, okay? S is where? 2, comma, nope. Negative 2. Negative 2. T is? 0, negative 2. Zero, negative two. Now, what's their scale factor here? K three two. Would you multiply the threes and multiply the two, the threes and multiply ten? Great question. Hey, Kevin just asked, would you multiply like the three to the x and the y to the two? Uh, uh, no, what you would do 
is you can multiply each x by 3 over 2 and each y by 3 over 2. So we end up taking negative 1 times 3 over 2, and then we'll take 4 times 3 over 2. Now, negative 1 is over 1. What's negative 1 times 3 over 2? Negative 3 over 2. Now wait, will fractions be very helpful to us? No. Uh, maybe we convert it to a decimal. What's negative 1.5? 1. 1. Okay. Wait, how do you, can you use calculators? Sorry, hey, wait. Gregory, what did you say? Uh, nothing. Actually? Yep. Okay. Kenny? Can we use calculators on these? Yep. <laughs> 4 over 1 and times 3 over 2. Can the 4 and the 2 reduce? Yeah. We love reducing. 2 becomes... And 4 becomes 2. Oh, six. I asked in reverse order. 2 times 3 is 6 over 1, so 6. Now you might be wondering, Mr. Costle, how do I graph a decimal or fraction? Well, negative 1.5. What two numbers is that going to be between? One and two. One and two. Negative 1 and negative. negative 2. Now, is it partway between, like randomly, or is it halfway between it's exactly? Halfway. It's halfway between exactly. So we're going to go exactly halfway between the negative 1 and the negative 2. We're going to go 6 up, and we're going to say, hey, here is my Q prime. Questions on that? Okay. Now I'll give you guys the rest of these real quick. You'd get 1.5, comma, 3. 3, comma, negative 3. And 0, comma, negative 3. If you see the same number over and over again, can you kind of use that to help you go quicker? Yeah, so if we see 2 multiple times, we're like, oh, it's going to be 3 or just negative 3 the whole time. Okay, so we can go ahead and graph those. This isn't very big. Well, it only got one and a half times larger, so it's not even twice as big. I'm tired. How tired of Mr. Crossell? No, you're just making it. I Mr. Crossell. Questions on that one? So we just multiply by whatever there is to multiply by. Does that make sense? Does anyone still need this? Okay. I want you to start looking at 11. If, once you're done with this, I want you to start looking at 11 and think about that. Don't blurt, though. I want you to start looking at 11 once you're done with number 9. Keep looking at it. Think about what you would do. Think about how you would do it. Those kind of things. Not just physically look at it, but actually like intellectually look at it. Okay. So 11 is a little bit different. We're trying to figure out what the scale factor is. We're given the pre-image. We're given the image. And we're trying to figure out what is the scale factor. So how much bigger or smaller did it get? Now, first and foremost, raise your hand if, the, if you think this image got bigger. Raise your hand if you, you think this image got smaller. I'd agree with it getting smaller. How can we tell? The primes are smaller, the big ones are regular. So a good idea might be to take two points here and figure out what the, where they are at. So which points might be a good idea for us to take? Zero, D, D, and prime. D or E, right? Why might D and E be easier than F? Because they're on an axis. So let's do D and D prime. D is at zero comma what? Zero, two, and zero, six. Zero, six. D prime's at zero comma two. So to go from D to D prime, what would I have to multiply by? Four. Okay, to go from D prime to D, I would multiply by 3. So to go the other way, I'd multiply by 1 third. And let's think about this way. 6 times 1 third equals 2, 6 over 1. Well, 6 and 3 reduce to 2 and 1. And yeah, that is 2. If you want to make a math equation out of it, you can. The original times X equals your new. 6X equals 2. Divide by 6, reduce 2 over 6 to 1 over 3, and you get your answer. Questions on that? No. 
Be careful, though, that you go from your old to your new. Go ahead and try number 12. No learning, but go ahead and try number 12. So on 12, do we think it's getting bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger, I would agree. Now, how much bigger? Which point might be the easiest for us to pick? X. Probably X. Oh, X is really 0, comma, 2. Or excuse me, let me change that. 2, comma, 0. What's X prime? 8. 8, comma, 0. How do I get from 2 to 8? Four times bigger. Multiply it by 4. The scale factor is 4, okay? Three. Okay, I'll give you a couple don't do's real quick. Don't do number three or eight. Don't do 